People often argue over Android versus iPhones, but the real debate should be middle-aged Gen X morning shows versus Hoppy Hour. Guess who wins? We will let you decide. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Now for something completely different. Smoke medical weed every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Ryan Hoppy and Pastit. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Uh. Doubted. Never worry about the dollar. Need a source or trending topic. Be the hottest. Search about us. Competition microscopic. Never copied. I'm a giant rolling weed up. Now we flying. H O P P E. H O P P E. H O P P E. This is Happy Hour. I'm your host, Ryan Hoppy, hanging out with you for the next hour. You can always leave me a voicemail, 856-49-HOPPY. We are very close to doing live broadcasts, but until then, you can leave me a voicemail at 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. We are live from the Topher Morrison Persona 5 Studios in sunny, beautiful, crazy, bad at driving St. Petersburg, Florida. And speaking of bad at driving, we'll get to that in a second. But if you are listening on the radio via podcast radio in St. Louis, Savannah, Georgia, Detroit, Fort Myers, Tampa Bay, we're syndicated. I'm not bragging. Hi, this is a morning radio show on a podcast. You never know what I might talk about. And a lot of times my rants on here can get people riled up online. And we got a huge response on one of my YouTube videos. And now a lot of radio shows, when they begin their show by reading emails, they only read the ones that are complimentary towards them. You never hear them talking about the ones that criticize them. Me, I'm a genuine guy. I'm going to give you genuine genuine results. Mm -hmm. I did a video where I said that I think that Travis Kelsey cheats on Taylor Swift. I said, I think. I, I didn't state it as a fact. But you're telling me all the time that Taylor Swift's on the other side of the planet touring and doing her thing that Travis hasn't had intercourse with anybody else. He's been celibate for the seven months. Yeah, I know they hang out occasionally, but football players, I used to hang out with one. They're dogs. Somebody wrote, I hope Travis sues you for defamation of character. Maybe if you spoke the truth, you'd be a bigger podcast. Mm -hmm. Are you jealous? His D may be harder than yours. Whoa. I would have subscribed before you started hating on Taylor and Travis. Leave them the F alone. No. Mrs. Pleats on YouTube didn't subscribe because I spoke my opinion. No. Come back. What are you doing? (laughs) Defamation the character. He's a public figure. People just throw out accusations online and they never really know what they're saying. And it's because they don't want to think bad thoughts about their heroes. For me, growing up, I loved radio. This just in breaking news. Ryan Hoppy likes radio. You never knew that. Mm -hmm. It's my whole life. My typical favorite celebrity was radio host growing up. And I've met every single radio host I like besides, I would say, Man Cow and Howard Stern. But I've met all my heroes, and 98% of them were ass wipes. The one that was cool was Eddie Volkman from Eddie and Jobo. I'm not trying to name drop, but I'm saying you don't want to think bad thoughts about your heroes. 
Travis Kelsey probably cheats on Taylor. Maybe he goes to bed watching porn and doesn't need sex every night, even though he's a CTE-filled, testosterone-filled football player. But yeah, he's just occasionally getting the teethy mm, from Taylor Swift having the missionary sex with her because, you know, she ain't doing anything kinky. I'm not saying that she's not attractive, but I don't find her attractive. You know what I'm saying? Like you look at somebody and you go, they're okay looking. Taylor Swift is okay looking. If she walked into a bar and there were a lot of girls there, if she wasn't Taylor Swift, she's the one you talk to after four rejections. You ever notice that a lot of dudes don't find her that attractive, but the girls that are heterosexual that are fans of her find her attractive because that's their hero? You don't want to meet your heroes. Every Swifty online kisses her ass. Like, Howard Stern's one of my favorite shows of all time, and he's not a nice guy. A lot of the shows I grew up listening to are not nice guys. I'm able to be a fan of somebody. Michael Jordan's a scumbag. LeBron probably cheats on his wife. I'm able to say that my heroes are scumbags. You got to be able to say that too. Bunch of psychophants, I think that's the word. Bunch of kiss asses. My God. This next comment. I love hearing you rant, Ryan Hoppy. I don't know who you are, but I just subscribed. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, now we're getting into kiss-ass territory. And I just said I don't like radio shows that uh, read comments about how great they are. <laughs> I remember Rover used to do that. It was like, over here are all the emails about how great you are. And over here are the ones that are bad. And all the ones that were to the right would be thrown into the garbage. I respect you, Rover, but I just had to bring it up. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. What a crazy year 2024 has been. You know why 2024 has been a crazy year? Not because some girl who talks about spitting during oral sex is now a millionaire without even doing any OnlyFans. No, 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 no. Not a hot Tua. The fact that female basketball is relevant for the first time ever. And I'm all about equality and equal rights, so I don't care. Anybody who's sexist out there is triggered by it. I love it. But we need to have an honest discussion about Angel Reese as a basketball player. She's really sassy. She's the enemy to Caitlin Clark. Mm-hmm. She's the bad guy. Kaylin Clark's the good g girl. Here's the thing, though. She gets all these double-doubles, which means double-digit points and rebounds in games, but she'll miss like 12 shots, Angel Reese will, and then she gets the rebounds off of her missed shots, and all these woke people at ESPN that don't want to admit that Kaylin Clark is the only reason anybody's actually watching the WNBA. Mm-hmm. You could hear crickets for the past 29 years that league's been around. But all of a sudden, your golden child, who happens to be a heterosexual, beautiful, I do find her beautiful, woman, white girl, comes in and saves the league. You should all be kissing her ass. Because without Kaylin Clark, if she would have taken that deal to go to the big three league with Ice Cube, look at us talking about female basketball. Woohoo! The WNBA would be nothing without her. And last night, I saw Angel Reese was walking into the game wearing a Dennis Rodman Detroit Pistons uniform, even though Dennis Rodman played for the Bulls. I mean, that's how out of touch you are. But once again, look at where we are, America, and worldwide. We are talking about female basketball for the first time ever, but we can't lie and say that it's not because of Caitlin Clark. It's because of a pretty white girl that's heterosexual that probably likes Trump. Sorry. Can't lie to yourself. Everybody wants to lie to themselves in life. Oh, my heroes are awesome. Oh, this. And you got to be honest with yourself. With the short time you're on this planet, you got to be honest. And that's what Hoppy Hour provides here. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. This next topic I've really wanted to talk about, but I didn't want to make it a Facebook post because I didn't want to trigger the people on my Facebook friends list because this just in. I want everybody, and I mean everybody, to be a listener of Hoppy Hour. But sometimes I got to just say things. <sighs> I'm not saying you shouldn't be on Ozempic to lose weight. <laughs> 
but it was originally designed as a diabetes drug. Now, I'm not the foremost expert on, let's say, Ozempic. I'm the expert on all things heterosexual relationships. But I'm telling you, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, not everybody needs to be on Ozempic. Everybody's getting the Ozempic face. And now I know there's a lot of people that are overweight, that are taking Ozempic, and that are losing weight. But it's like, you look terrible. Sorry, I'm going to be the one to say it. It doesn't look good. I'm a little chubby, but I swim and I lift and I try my hardest. But sometimes I want four slices of Marco's pizza before bed. But this new look, that's what I did last night. This new look of all these people that used to be overweight that now have Ozempic face, it doesn't look healthy. It looks unnatural. And it's the unspoken thing because everybody goes, look at you. You lost weight. You put a shot in your body and you never hit the gym. Mm Mm-hmm. Not trying to be a douche by saying it, but it's the truth and it's what everybody thinks, but you don't want to be insensitive and you don't want to be mean and you want to support the people, but you're pretty much not even trying. I'm not saying everybody on Ozempic doesn't work out and eat healthy. I'm just saying most of them. It's just something I've wanted to get off my chest, but I didn't really feel like making a topic on my social media just because then, oh my God, like last night I made a post. I was like, hey, I'm from Illinois. What's the key to getting into college football? And some mutant from Pinellas Park, a listener was like, a TV. I'm like, thanks. That's what I'm asking. I'm not asking about literally getting... That's why making posts is so annoying because you have the people that are so literal and you're like... Do you have to be a contrarian? Do you have to be a douche? I also thought about this. So I live in Pinellas County. Mm -hmm. I live in St. Pete. It's very environmentally friendly. But we need to have a discussion about how environmentally friendly St. Pete is. A little too environmentally friendly. And what I mean by it is... Being environmentally friendly is like being political or being religious. You have the people that are the Bible thumpers. You have the people that are diehard Trumpers or diehard side chick Kamala Harris people. And then you have the people that say you must use the reusable straws and not the plastic straws. What if I want to? What if the, the reusable or paper straws make my drink taste weird? It's okay if you're a hippy-dippy girl or a hippy-dippy guy and you want to save the environment. But what if we want to just have plastic? Because then you hear from every hippie, well, if everybody did this for the environment, then we'd be in such a better place. Yeah. Also, if nobody were to murder people, then more people would be alive such an open-minded it's such a closed-minded mindset about the fact that you want everybody to do the things your way when they're literally never going to but the environment that's all i talk about there's this girl at this place i go to all the time who talks about it. it's like that is so boring if the environment is your personality at all times at all times It's like people that are religious, and that's their personality at all times. Nobody cares. Nobody's going, whoa, you're environmentally friendly. You're so cool. Please. Please talk about it more. It's so interesting how you have paper straws. So riveting. Such an interesting conversation starter. Mm. Something else that I want to talk about on my podcast, because this is the opening monologue. I have a lot to get on my, I was going to say on my chest, sounds weird. No, I don't like Cleveland steamers. I have a lot to get off my chest. We need to have a discussion, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery, about Florida drivers. Mm-hmm. And here's what we need to get off And here's what we need to say about Florida drivers. There seems to be a disconnect with people that are born in Florida and people that are either visiting Florida or that moved here. Two weeks ago, I went to Chicago for my Uncle Ken's funeral. He was my hero and he died. And I went up to Chicago and I was going 75 on the highway Mm -hmm. in Chicago and people were tailgating me. 
If you go 75 in Florida, you're speeding around everybody. So you have the Floridians that go, oh my God, the people from Florida are actually good drivers and it's the people from the north that don't know how to drive. And then you have the people from the north, like my uncle who was ripping into Florida drivers that visit Illinois, that they think Florida drivers are too slow. And there seems to be some disconnect where everybody's the problem. I think the problem is most drivers are high on their medical card or the Florida sun makes them chill, man. And they're so laid back and they don't feel like doing anything. And when you live in Chicago, you got places to be. I was literally, I will never forget where I was. I was driving to Star 96.7 to sit in on Eddie Volkman's show. And I was on the highway going towards the Juliet exit. And all of a sudden I'm going 85. That's like going 140 in Florida. I'm going 85 in Illinois and somebody's tailgating me. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Sometimes I look at this planet and I go, where is everything going? I don't know. Another thing, because I'm doing my opening monologue. <laughs> Can you tell I grew up watching Craig Ferguson? His opening monologues used to be all over the place. Everybody else was busy getting laid in high school and partying. I would sneak into the party senior year. Class of 2012. I want to make you guys feel old. Mm -hmm. But I watched a lot of late night TV, and I loved Craig Ferguson's over-the-top monologues. And something else I want to talk about. Speaking of women, uh, is the women who have to make horoscopes their personality. Oh my God, you're a Virgo. My birthday's in three days. Don't uh, not say happy birthday to me. Uh, but people will literally go, oh my God, you're a Virgo and I'm a Libra or I'm a Cancer. Oh my God, we can't date. No, we can't date because you don't have an original personality and you base off everything off of something that's called fiction, which is known as religion and astrology. Cause there's a beginning where you're alive, a middle and then an end. And then there's nothing after And astrology is nonsense. It's fun to read cause it makes your mind expand a little bit. I'm not saying I don't read it every day, but the people who take it so seriously need to find a new hobby, especially when it's a white girl. Oh my God. That is such Virgo tendencies. You literally can look at any of the tendencies and any of the traits of any of the signs and find it within yourself. <sighs> Crazy, man. It's absolutely nuts what's going on with this planet. Everybody wants there to be something. People in the Midwest want there to be God and want there to be the Roman Catholic Church. Down here, people are getting prostitutes in Florida. We're all going to die someday. None of this matters. Chill. Chillax, dog. But I don't want to give my audience into a panic attack about the idea of being dead and never, ever existing ever again. So we're going to go to break. A56. 49 Hobby. That's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hobby Radio and you can always email me Ryan Hobby Radio at gmail.com. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you're listening in the US or in the UK. As long as you're listening, that's all that matters. We will be right back on Happy Hour after this. Do not touch that radio dial, that streaming device. However the hell you're listening to my show, my award-winning circus known as Happy Hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com Happy Hour will be right back. Now, if you don't feel like listening to this song, you can skip forward. <sighs> what song do I feel like playing? Uh, you can skip forward four minutes, but here is Chicago by the LEP Bogus Boys.
Yeah, uh, uh Tell me what you know about the middle of the map Gangsters in them all black, white socks, fitted caps Posted on the block, 30 shot clip hanging This ain't a rap trend, shot town, bim bang Shootouts every night, they complaining that they can't sleep It's a church and a liquor store all on the same street Rain, sleet, snow, man, I'm a hustle cocaine All sales final, I'm a product of this dope game Shot is got no aim, bullets got no name Cluckers dancing in a line like they on Soul Train We don't care about blue lights, come take a picture Still tipping, that's the day of us Chicago yeah. nigga, this the city of the wind Niggas on the corner trying to win Chicago nigga, stay hustling in the snow Niggas even hustling in the snow You see them blue lights in the air Cameras everywhere, we don't give a fuck, we still tipping Chicago nigga, where they hustling in the snow Niggas even hustling in the snow Chicago nigga these cops crooked in Chicago Daily took them out them crown fix and bought them tie hoes In traffic, I don't panic when I see them police lights I got them pigs in my pockets like Jody White Hustling that white snow, temperatures ice cold My workers serving with them cameras on a light pole Gangsta disciples, Blackstones, BDs The biggest street gang is the CPDs The sleeves on my triple goose smell like gunpowder Hawk blowing like a car horn stuck in Russia yeah, the Swiss cheese is driver side though. This how it is, this how we live in Chicago, nigga. This the city of the wind. Niggas on the corner trying to win. Chicago, nigga. Stay hustling in the snow. Niggas even hustling in the snow. Yeah, you see them blue lights in the air. Cameras everywhere. We don't give a fuck, we still tipping. Chicago, nigga. Where they hustle in the snow, snow. Niggas even hustle in the snow uh, Chicago yeah, nigga Players in a home to all the gangsters When you better pick a side if you plan to make it And when you ride through the shack, keep that hat straightened Before they find you tied up in that pitch black basement Cameras on the pole flicking pictures, niggas still pitching Got the block, jalapeno hot, but it's still tipping Slickers flipping on me, trying to plan a itchy on me Cause they ran my government, name and got the history on me You know we gang pain in Chicago Even though the structure done changed in Chicago uh, that wind blowing in Chicago And when I'm out of town, I let them know I'm from Chicago, Chicago nigga This the city of the wind Niggas on the corner trying to win Chicago, nigga Stay hustling in the snow Niggas even hustling in the snow Yeah You see them blue lights in the air Cameras everywhere We don't give a fuck, we still tipping Chicago, nigga where they hustle in the snow, right. snow. Niggas even hustle in the snow Chicago nigga mm -hmm. What a frightening song I wouldn't mess with them I love the part where they say the biggest gang is the CPD being the Chicago police. Like, duh. The hour will be right back. We already knew that. Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by Mitronine. When I tell you that it's the best kava and kratom around, I'm a man of my words. Now, here's the deal. If you Google the word kava or kratom online, there's all this hate about it from Big Pharma and the Mayo Clinic and WebMD because it's replacing actual medicine. But if you're looking for an alternative, I just said that funny, alternative to alcohol or opioids, kava and kratom is the way to go. MITRA-9.com and at checkout, use keyword hoppy to save 20%. Don't believe the hate. This is also being brought to you by DZBZ Honey at DZBZHoney.com. The best Delta 8 CBD honey around. It comes in lollipops. L -l Lick the lollipop, the wrapper. It comes in honey sticks or a jar of honey. However the hell you want to get high and watch Netflix. Go to DZBZHoney.com and check it out. And use keyword hoppy. Almost forgot that. Happy hour. It's time for happy in the morning. Is 
heavily medicated, always high, allegedly, and caffeinated on energy drinks, what could possibly go wrong? Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Now I got to give a PSA. I got to give a shout out, a mention to all my boomer listeners. If you don't feel like listening to the songs I play on this show, you can skip forward a few minutes, but I'm enjoying the format I'm doing as it's exploding. I go on suno.com, S-U-N-O.com, and I make AI songs about myself because I'm a little bit of a narcissist. And here's a song I made about Happy Hour. Turn the dial to 80. There's a voice that sounds so true. Tampa Bay, we're here to stay. Happy Hour lights the way. Celebrity news on the go. Happy's got the inside flow. From the stars to dating scenes Waking up our wildest dreams Happy hour with Ryan H Call 856-494-6073 Every day is more than great He's got the news we need to see Hollywood inside his hands Talking love and famous plans From the east to west coast shores Ryan Hoppy always scores Got a question on your mind Hoppy's always right on time Dial the number, don't delay Keep on shining bright today Hoppy Hour with Ryan H 856-49-HOPPY It's 856-494-6773 you can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. What do you think my Snapchat name would be? Hmm, Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ryan Hoppy always scores. Oh, Happy Hot Topic! She's already drawing up plays, so we might have to put one in. Oh, gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> Fake laughter from sports reporters when they're in front of famous people. Kansas City Chiefs star quarterback Patrick Mahomes says Taylor Swift knows football all too well. So, Oh, I'm sure she's an expert on it, and you're not just lying because it's your teammate's girlfriend. So much so, he jokes that she's been drawing up plays for the team. Go team, go sports ball, throw the ball down the field. You know like when you talk to a nerd or someone in theater and they're like, oh, you're into your sports ball. That's what I feel like Taylor Swift says when she's at any football game. Go sports ball. I'm sure she knows nothing. She asked a lot of great questions. She's already drawing up plays. So not- Why do you guys throw the ball? Put one in. Oh gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> in an August 29th interview with NFL on NBC, Patrick talks about the influence the singer has had on football since she started dating Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey last year. Do you feel like you notice a difference like with Taylor Swift? Like even when you go out, you're the most famous sports <laughs> guy in America. Eh. Why does every reporter got to kiss all the players' asses? But do you feel like it even went up to another level with yeah, the Taylor Swift I think, infusion? I, I think it's been cool to see. The- no, it didn't. Chris Sims. Them having Taylor Swift be associated with the Chiefs, it made them less famous. What type of question is that? Of course they're more famous because of Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's like saying Tim Walls is the vice president nominee with Kamala Harris. Did that make him more famous getting nationwide exposure? This is sports journalism. In America, but do you feel like it even went up to another level with yeah, the Taylor Swift I think, infusion? I, I think it's been cool to see the 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 girls and the the women that have really embraced right. watching football. And I know, I mean, that's good. Being a, a girl dad, how much? Yeah, that's the new word ever since Kobe died. Girl dad, girl dad, girl. Dad. I mean, that's fine, but it's such an overused word. Just saying. How cool it is for me. Yeah. I mean, to see like these little girls, these daughters, and how much they're loving and spending time with their with their dad watching football, yeah. and, um, and then meeting Taylor and realizing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. God, it wasn't even this annoying when Jessica Simpson and Tony Romo dated 16 years ago because it was pathetic that he dated her. I know she wasn't the reason that that field goal didn't go through, and there was the bad snap by Tony and all the interceptions in the clutch and all blah 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 da da da, but. 
It wasn't that annoying when they dated. Oh my God. And I know I'm talking about it, so I'm a part of the problem. I get those comments all the time. Oh my God, if you don't care, why do you talk about it? Because it's in the news. And I got to cover the news, okay? Doesn't mean I like it. What am I going to talk about the stock market? Get the hell out of here. People are like, what are you talking about celebrity news? It's so boring. What do you want me to talk about? Sports? I never played sports. I did sports radio. I was good at it, in my opinion, but I didn't know a lot about sports, so it was my downfall. I'm going to talk about something I know about. And my whole life, I've been consuming entertainment at all different versions, radio, TV, and film, so I know enough. Um, I see this next headline here, and uh, I don't know. I've never really been a fan of Tom Hanks. He just seems like kind of a tool. Oh, happy hot topic! Again, by saying that Tom Hanks seems like a tool, I'm sure the comment section on all social media is going to be, oh my God, he's a better person than you'll ever be, because all the fans of any celebrity don't want to admit that they're probably scumbags. Mm-hmm. Tom Hanks is not selling drugs. In an Instagram post, August... No, his son used to. 29th, the Academy Award winner writes a public service announcement warning fans about drug advertisements using his likeness that he says were created fraudulently and through AI. Mm -hmm. The post reads, quote, there are multiple ads over the internet falsely using my name. Yeah, that's got to be scary with AI. A lot of boomers will fall for it. Likeness and voice promoting miracle cures and wonder drugs. These ads have been created without my consent, fraudulently and through AI. Yeah, anybody that thinks that Tom Hanks would be endorsing drugs is, uh, what's the word? Gullible. Adds that he has nothing to do with these posts mm. or the products and treatments or the spokespeople touting these cures. Do not be fooled. Do not be swindled. Do not lose your hard-earned money. The post comes nearly a year after he issued a similar statement to fans about a fake dental ad that used his identity. Tom has openly talked about living with type 2 diabetes and said, It must be some boomers that are doing AI because no millennial or Gen Z would be influenced by Tom Hanks. <laughs> he seems like a douche. Why would I care what he's endorsing? Is that he only works with my board certified doctor regarding my treatment. Back in 2013, the Forrest Gump star opened up about his type 2 diabetes diagnosis. He tells David Letterman on The Late Show, quote, I went to the doctor and he said, you know those high blood sugar numbers you've been dealing with since you were 36? Mm -hmm. Well, you've graduated. You've got type 2 diabetes, young man. I feel like every doctor feels like they gotta play kind of like cool in front of Tom Hanks. Like, I'm not saying you don't want to try to entertain the room when you're diagnosing somebody with diabetes, but I feel like every conversation that Tom Hanks is ever in, everyone tries to be, like, slick. Like, they're at, they're at a, like, a steakhouse, and the, like, waiter's like, here's your steak, Mr. Hanks. Tom is among the many celebrities, including Drake, The Weeknd, and Taylor Swift, whose name and likeness have been falsely used in AI-generated images, songs, or political endorsement. Now, was it all alleged through AI that Drake was sending underage messages to Millie Bobby Brown, giving her dating advice when she was 15? Oh, wait, that's right. That was real. He's a pedophile. <laughs> Alleged pedophile. He's never, ever hit on girls that were 16 years old in 2010. Several state and federal investigators have recently launched or pushed for expanded protections against AI. Well, that's great and all. I don't know how you're going to stop it. I don't even get how it works. I literally go on Suno.com and I tell it what type of song I want, and it makes me a song in two seconds. How are you going to prevent it? It's nice to say, oh, we're going to prevent AI from doing this. Get the hell out of here. I love when I see people using profile pictures that have AI in it. I saw this one radio guy, Michael Mira, who used a picture of himself, and he looked good, and he actually has lost weight, but it was so AI hurt, and all his listeners, all the boomers were like, oh, you look so good. I'm like, that's not a real picture. Because right now, we're in the early stages of AI, so you can tell when someone's kind of fake, but very soon, we're going to be in a different stage of AI. Mm -hmm. We're going to be in a stage where you never know what's real and what's not. Um, growing up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think the reason that the millennial generation slept around so much and partied so much and was scandalous was because of that show known as Jersey Shore. 
Yeah, we know. Alright, we got a situation. I'm the sweetest bitch you'll ever meet. Ah, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> There's that cocaine laugh by Ronnie. <laughs> He's such a scumbag. After I have sex with a guy, I will rip their heads off. That used to turn me on when she would say that. Like, you can rip off my head whenever. My actual head, not my dick. Oh, uh, there's Angelina. Talking about period S, period dumps in the family vacation season one in 2018. Remember exactly. When I would board up the best of my Calta from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., and it's the same, uh, it's time for Sparka, time for this. It's a local morning show in Tampa I worked for for eight years, seven years of this, and uh, they would do best ofs overnight, and I would run it before they figured out how to have computers do it. And during the middle of, okay, time for Sparko, all of a sudden I'd be like, um, it's 2 a.m. I'm going to watch TV. And I remember watching Jersey Shore and Angelina was like, oh my God, I have period. Let me see if I can find a video about period S's. And it was so gross. Like I know that girls, I think go number two. I'm very big on not thinking about that. Some people are like, oh yeah, when I'm laying in bed with my girl, I rip ass. I'm like, you're just gross. Okay, keep that a little private. Mm. Here we go. My vagina is fine. Well, mine's not. <laughs> I sharded in my pants. I'm walking yeah. I sharded. No, I, that's just a shard. My pants. Hell yeah. She's married now. <laughs> like, I know the girls poop. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. No, I really don't think you I think you're being dramatic. Can I check my underwear? All right, I my pants. Yeah, I remember it was like 2 a.m. at my radio job, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, yuck. This really in there? So this is Angelina having her period. Shh. I think it is on the seat. Is you on the seat? Is you on the seat? Can you imagine any of these imbeciles being parents? <laughs> I don't know if Angelina has kids, but you just have people that are like, yeah, my mom talks about having period S's on TV. She used to be known to be called what? The Staten Island Dump. Staten Island. Now, now she, she took, took a Staten, Staten Island, Island Dump. dump. Hell yeah, quality television. Well, that was in the good old days of Jersey Shore. Now you got Snooki talking about how she was set up. Whoa! Happy hot topic! We know the period ass wasn't set up. I mean, where's the beach? Is Nicole, you don't even like, know about that. Yo, get the f off my arm before you're talking to a police really? officer like that. Yeah. Nicole, you don't even like, know about that. Of course I know about where's the beach. No. Oh my God, because I'm gay, I have to do talk over the top. Look, I know it comes with being gay, but my God, talk normal. I'm not saying gay people don't talk normal, but this is just over the top. That. Of course I know about where's the beach. No. I can't, who talks like that? Unless you're in Boys Town in Chicago. That. Of course I know about where's the beach. No, behind hey. the scenes oh, of tell it. Me now. Nicole Snooky Polizzi spilling Jersey Shore secrets on that infamous scene. Yeah, you don't really need to say her first or last name. We just know her as Snooky. No one's like, oh, Nicole Polizzi. We got to see you be a little messy over on Jersey Shore back mm -hmm. in the day. <laughs> well, I wasn't judge free zone over here. I got arrested. The reality star now claiming Jersey Shore producers were behind it. Yeah. Get the f off! Get off! Wait, where is she going? I watched the video back, and one of the producers said, "Just arrest her," and they arrested me. It yeah, you were being an asswipe. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you got a little set up, but it wasn't like you were innocent. You weren't, um, what's the word, um, framed. It's unclear what video Snooki's referring to, but she's dishing all about the 2010 incident on Therapist with Jake Shane. Nicole, where are you going now? Ah, I'm going to pee. No, you're not. You're yeah. cuddling a bitch. And you know the producers probably were like, oh my God, she's so infuriating to be around, we might as well just arrest her. What? If I want to have a beer, I'm allowed to have a beer. They drank so much the night before, like... <laughs> I think about the fact that millennials would watch this. We had something called Jersey Day when we were in high school where every Thursday we watched it. It was the season when they were in Italy in 2012. And um, I'm telling you, it defines the party generation of the early 2012s. This is what we were consuming. No, you're not. You're yeah. cuddling a beer. If I want to have a beer, I'm allowed to have a beer. They drank mm. so much the night before, like <laughs> 10 Long Islands. 
Yeah, I don't miss drinking at all. Long like, Island? I drink a little bit, but not that much. So it's I my broke drink my back I, in the day. And then I just didn't stop. He's trying to talk. He doesn't realize he's interviewing Snooki. I, I, I got to make it about me. About every, every time I'm on a date with a guy, I have five mimosas. Long Island was I my broke drink my, back I, in the day. Shut up. The day. And then I just didn't stop. After taking shots with the old couple, everything kind of just went blank. I thought I was wild before I had kids. Me yeah, you shouldn't be arrested though getting blacked out in public. Oh wait, I've done that. Me and Jenny partied the, the hardest we've ever partied in my, in my entire life. Oh my God. Like it's cool when you're drunk and you're around other drunk people and the way they talk sounds so drunk so you feel like you're part of a community outside of a bar. But oh my God, when you're sober and you're listening to a drunk person, you feel like your IQ points are dropping. But this moment was all snooky. I was like, where's the beach? Like, how do I get? All right, I can't take this kiss ass. <laughs> I don't know how to interview people, so I just laugh. I take a play out of the Jimmy Fallon book of hosting something. <laughs> Happy hour. Happy hour. Now for something completely different. Ladies. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ryan Happy Radio dot com. Happy hour will be right back. Mm -hmm. Now, for you boomers out there, if you don't feel like listening to this song, you can skip forward four minutes. But here's Do It Like My Birthday by Sammy Astro T. Hey, my birthday is in three days. <laughs> Name drop. Sagittarius birthday, November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be flaming and torching them with the bullshit they handing out. Pull the twist to make a wishing. Blow the candles out. Blow the candles out. Blow the candles out. Sagittarius birthday, November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be flaming and torching them with the bullshit they handing out. Pull the twist to make a wishing. Blow the candles out. Pull an all white phantom. I'm a killer with the pants and the shirt and the shoes and the hat with the shades and the chain and the watch is the reason I be standing now. Where well, ice and spin that cake while I lick the ice and off the cake. Uh -huh. It's twist the B day, y'all. Come on, everybody, put your boys celebrate with me. Do it like my birthday. Do it like my birthday. Do it, do it, do it, do it like my birthday. All day. I floss like a dentist patient This shit testing my patience Sick is working my nerves I'm getting spinning that money Like the first and the third Laying on gated skin Blowing cushion the wind Just like Hey, Yeah Popping no tags If these was busting the sack I'm gonna whip it When I'm going hard To get a gone mad chop Models all around me So I'm buying up the bomb I'm a hood star And I'm partying like a rock star Only at my pick game Meaning you can't up me, mommy, I'm the guap green king like this. Do it like my, do it like my, do it like my, do it like my, do it, do it, do it like my birthday. 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 Do it like my birthday
like my birthday. Every day, hey. I do it like my birthday. Do it like you do it like my birthday. Hey. You did. That's what we say around here. Choked out, choked out. Bling with the fresh gear. Oh. Keep it cocked, snake skin, but the fifty hat. Candy panty, old school, rolling round on four flats. Hit the liquor store, mix the Remy with the drum. Rolling on the ninety four, looking for them sexy. Oh. Like it hurts, hey. Okay. Watching these bad just to do it in the worst way. I'm a winner, mama. I am in the first place. Catch me on the dance floor throwing up my birthplace. I'm an animal. I woke up on a Monday, and subsequently, I ain't go to sleep till it was Thursday. Shot a patron and blow a birthday. Get up with a bitch and take her home on the first day. Burger King, mama, you can have it your way. Or I can bring another bitch and y'all can do it her way. Hotel room, do not disturb way. That's how I'ma do it when I do it like my birthday. That is Sound Master T with Do It Like My Birthday. The hour will be right back. This following segment has been brought to you by the best pre and post workout in the game. That being Fortify.com. F O R T I F E Y E.com. When I tell you that Dr. Michael Lang of the nationally syndicated Ask the Doctor radio show makes the best pre and post workout around, I'm a man of my words. F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E dot com at checkout. I know for the other websites, it's checkout H-O-P-P-E. That's the keyword. But for Fortify.com, it's Ryan 20. F-O-R-T-I-F-E-Y-E dot com. Ryan 20 to save 20%. This is also being brought to you by the best barber who always makes me look handsome in all of the Bay Area. That being Rich Keeley Master Barbershop. If you go to richkbarber.com and you sign up for an appointment ahead of time, I'm telling you that you will not only get a great deal, you'll save $10, but you'll also get the best haircut ever. He is at 4545 West Kennedy Boulevard, 727-286-0891. It's 727-286-0891. But you got to sign up ahead of time. You can't just go there and go, Hey, Rich, could I get a haircut? No, you got to sign up at richkbarber.com. And I'm telling you, I'm a man of my words. He will hook you up. This is also being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. 2700 22nd Street North, and that's in St. Petersburg. 727-821-4097. At 727-821-4097. For all the info, go to amiracademy.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. Did you know Ryan Hoppy is bipolar? He loves it. No, he hates it. He loves it. No, he hates it. Get what we did there. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Did you know that Ryan Hoppy got a vasectomy? Well, now you know, and we aren't even sure why we told you. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen. What is it? Here it is. Oh, that's right. Other stations are tuned in to 856 49 Hoppy. It's 856 494 6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. If you don't feel like listening to this, you can skip forward three minutes. But here is a new song I made on Suno.com about my show. Yeah. 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 Yeah, spin the dial, tune in, it's Hoppy Hour Show Out of Tampa Bay, where the good vibes flow Ryan Hoppy got the scoop, hot gossip and toast Celebrity news, dating tips, we all in the know Hoppy Hour, where Ryan is the place to be Celebrity buzz, the love lies free 
85649467 Call up, spill your tea, live on the frequency yeah. Something about stars, scandals and affairs From Hollywood Hills to K-pop flares Ryan breaks it down, no drama he spares Get your dose of tea, listen if you dare Happy hour with Ryan is the place to be Celebrity buzz, the love lies free 856-49 Happy 856-494-6773 From Hollywood Hills to K-pop flares Ryan breaks it down, no drama he spares Get your dose of tea, listen if you dare Happy hour with Ryan isn't it frightening how good the music is for AI? Like, it's not award-winning music. It sounds like what you hear on Top 40 Radio with the fake prank calls in the morning. Mm-hmm. I like this. Mm-hmm. Oh man, what the hell is going on with these imbeciles? From a fight over TV rights to a royal rift, things between William and Harry have, quote, not improved. The relationship at the moment is still completely fractured. These morons that don't know what a dentist is, these idiots, in the short lifetime you have, I get that Prince Harry is such a rat, but that's your brother. And you guys were just born into this boring thing called the royal family and everybody kisses your ass. But at the end of the day, you're mortal as well. And you have an uncle named Prince Prince Andrew. And let's be honest here. Prince William acts like he's so much better than Prince Harry. You're just a tool as well. And you really need to go to a dentist. I'm just being honest. Like the sooner you find a dentist, the better. Prince Harry got out Hollywood after dating that C-list actress known as Meghan Markle who only married him for the clout. Oh yeah, she's totally not using him. I don't get the whole royal family thing. You're just born into money and you're just like, oh, we don't do anything. People don't want to admit, but the Kardashians is the uh, American version of the royal family. Mm-hmm. Only we get to see them naked. We're certainly on different paths at the moment. And now Prince... He talks so pathetic. Can you believe they paid him like $50 million to do a podcast that only had one episode? Like, for example, Call Her Daddy, New Heights, all these podcasts are selling for $100 million. And all these unsuccessful, washed-up radio dudes that are like 50 years old are all jealous. Like, that's why you're unsuccessful at 50 is because you're jealous of other people. Of course, Travis Kelsey's going to get paid $100 million. Of course, Call Her Daddy's going to get paid $100 million. That doesn't bother me. But Prince Andrew getting paid $50 million to do one episode of that, this is the uh, Otwell Audio Podcast, that's annoying. And now, Prince William's Earthshot Prize Summit in New York City next month could be overshadowed by Prince Harry, who will be in the Big Apple at the same time. Yeah, you know he's trying to make it about him. He's trying to outshadow his brother. Because deep down, he knows he's nothing without his brother. Deep down, he knows that he married someone who's using him for clout. Oh, she's so interesting the way she wasn't known before she started dating him and claims she didn't know who Prince Harry and who Prince Harry is, which means that she's not cultured. If you don't know who Prince Harry is, you're a little out of touch. Harry has a string of appearances planned, but a source tells E.T. there is, quote, no chance the two will see each other. Just hang out. You guys are the same person. Prince William thinks he's so much better than Prince Harry. It's like, shut up, dude. You're not that important. You're not that impressive. No one's going, wow, you're not talking to your annoying brother? That's so noble of you. I mean, maybe people in Britain think that, but if they do, they're tools. My wife and I would... We're moving on. Mm. No word yet on if Meghan Markle will join Harry in New York. This marriage better last forever because you ditched your family. No matter how flawed they are, you ditched your blood for a woman. No word. You're super whipped. No word yet on if Meghan Markle will join Harry in New York. Mm -hmm. She's still hard at work launching her lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard. I'm just really proud of what we're creating. My husband is loving it too. Yeah, because he's whipped. <laughs> we all know who wears the pants in that relationship. There is no way Prince Harry does. You know, he is whipped. 
get over here, Harry. I'm so sorry. What do you need from me? Everything. I have daddy issues. Yeah, that father of her is like a real life Peter Griffin. <laughs> Eight five six. 49 Hoppy. Now, I'm going to talk about Taylor Swift, and I'm going to make this into a video, and every Taylor Swift fan who thinks that they defend her in a comment section, that they're impressing her, that they're making her happy, even though you're probably never going to meet her, and she wouldn't care if you defend her. I can't stand her. I was in Chicago two weeks ago, and my mom's best friend, who I love dearly, goes, what do you think of Taylor Swift? We're driving around in a car. And I go, do you want the real answer? She goes, yeah. And I go, I think she has the problem. I think she makes girls think that it's always the man's problem and that she has a longer body list and a longer body count than Kim Kardashian. And you could hear the pin drop. You could hear a pin drop in the car. It went dead silent. I can't stand her. So I'm just going to get that out there for everybody that's such a kiss ass. No! Happy Hot Topic! You're not impressing her. Scooter Braun trolling Taylor Swift. Yes, yeah, Scooter Braun seems like such an asswipe, but I love, <laughs> I love the trolling he does to her. It's great. She just gets her ass kissed everywhere she goes by the whole NFL. Yeah. For not being invited to her star-studded Rhode Island bash. I will say this. I think the secret to what we do is when we see something, mm -hmm. if we get a reaction from it, I think our goal is to just create that same reaction in someone else. Over the weekend, the singer hosted a party at her mansion with a bunch of her famous pals, including- Yeah, where was my invite? That must have been the most pretentious party ever. Think about all of those parties. Can you imagine, I'm not saying that she's like Jeffrey Epstein, but can you imagine in 50 years if there's like a documentary that all these parties were like a Jeffrey Epstein party? I know it's probably not that, but it would be funny. Including Gigi Hadid, Bradley Cooper, Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, and a I feel like hanging out with Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds is so annoying. She's so hot and he's so annoying. Of course, her beau, Travis Kelsey. He's like, oh my God, I got to put my phone on Do Not Disturb so my side chicks don't hit me up. Now, days later, Scooter's stirring up some controversy, mm -hmm. hopping on Instagram, jokingly asking, how was I not invited to this? <laughs> Could you imagine if he crashed it? He's like, hi, I made you re-record all your music and I ruined your life for a little bit. Can I come in? With the hashtag, laugh a little. Mm. You gotta think you gotta pick your moments. Yeah, and then you have all the fans, he's evil. No, he's just a scummy person. The former music manager also picking the moment to share he finally watched Taylor Swift versus Scooter Braun Bad Blood. <laughs> like, would I ever want to work with Scooter Braun? No, he's probably a scumbag, but I love watching him troll Taylor because everybody else just bows down to her and she's probably a bad person. The Max docuseries diving into their feud over him acquiring her masters. This was... Yeah, that's great a battle of titans it wasn't david versus goliath it was goliath versus goliath it all exploded in 2019 when scooter bought big machine records taylor's original label which owned her music catalog yeah she probably got used early on with that deal if you're gonna let that happen i thought taylor swift was so perfect and knew everything if she was so perfect and knew everything, that wouldn't have happened. Obviously, as we see from this $300 million plus price tag, Taylor's catalog is a huge part of what makes Big Machine valuable. Duh, she's like the most famous person ever. That's like saying Michael Jordan was a huge part of the NBA in the 90s. As much as I despise Taylor Swift, I'll give her her flowers. She's this generation's Elvis. Of course she's important to the music label. She's the biggest selling artist of this millennium. So they were not going to let that go without a huge fight mm -hmm. or payout. At Billboard's Women in Music event that year, Tay addressed how it all went down from her POV. Of course, Scoot. Yeah. Can you imagine if a POV got leaked of her? A good POV. You never contacted me or my team to discuss it prior to the sale. But you signed the contract that allowed that to happen. That's that bratty attitude that I could do no wrong. God.
or even when it was announced. You're such a victim, Taylor, the way you signed a bad contract and you used your signature and you signed up for it. <laughs> it's all feel bad for you and your billion dollars. And the way you're so fortunate in life, but oh, you got signed to a bad deal because you didn't know what you're doing because you got exploited. You're not the first and you're not the last. You're not special. I'm fairly certain he knew exactly how I would feel about it though. Yeah, he's a sociopath. Sorry, you got exploited. Mm-hmm. I've worked with sociopaths. It sucks. You get chewed out and spit up. But you move on. And let me just say that the definition mm -hmm. of the toxic male privilege in our industry. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Is everything is against men with Taylor Swift. I'm not saying he didn't screw her. But, oh, me, me, me. Yeah, I bet you've never screwed anybody over. I bet you're so perfect to everybody. Everybody's afraid to like say the truth about her besides her exes, but everybody's afraid to say anything because they don't want to lose the clout because there's a lot that comes with being nice to her. I'll say it. She's probably not a nice person and the whole, I'm going to bring up a male. I'm sure a female, you know, executive has never screwed over a female uh, artist. It's only men that do it, Taylor. You are sexist against men. I know someone listening is going to go, that's ridiculous. She's sexist against men. It's never her fault. Have you ever heard Taylor ever take accountability or ever make a song where it's anybody else's fault? No, it's, I'm so perfect. Is people saying, but he's always been nice to me when I'm raising valid concerns about artists and their rights to own their music. You know, her arguments are so wicked. I'm Taylor Swift. I know everything besides how to sign a good deal. Taylor claimed Scooter bullied her behind the scenes for years and that his purchase of Big Machine was sort of a middle finger to her. Yeah, I've had enough of her. <laughs> Ugh. Speaking of someone I've had enough of, but I hope she's okay. Now, in happy hours, history, 12 years of being around. I used to rip hard into Wendy Williams. But now that she's not doing well health-wise, I don't want to say I feel bad because karma hit her. Just like it'll hit middle-aged, fat morning show host from Tampa. Mm -hmm. I'm rooting for her. Oh my god, it is time to play Sparkle. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Wendy Williams was photographed in public for the first time in over a year. Yeah, that's good. As much as I despise Wendy Williams, you go, girl. The former talk show host was seen with her oh, she looks sick. son, Kevin Hunt Jr., at Bolingo Balance in Newark, New Jersey. On like, as much of an exploitive piece of garbage as she is, she is a mom. Bolingo Balance in Newark, New Jersey on August 19th. The store shared a picture of Wendy posing with an employee on Instagram earlier this month, marking the first time she has been spotted out since March 2023. Yeah, I'm rooting for her. Her radio show was much better than her TV show. She's always farting on TV and making weird faces. But on the radio, she had one of the best shows of all time. She was very innovative. Mm -hmm. Page Six was the first to report the encounter. An employee at the shop told yeah. the outlet Wendy was, quote, sharp, upbeat, and aware, and very bubbly during the visit, adding that she was, quote, engaging, but wasn't as familiar with what we do here, so her son was more explaining things. That's sad. Again, she was such a giant, and to see the downfall is sad. In the store's Instagram post, they wrote, quote, much love to Wendy Williams and her son. I remember when I met Kevin in Usha Village, my dad told me, I want you to meet Wendy's son. Wendy was last publicly seen in March 2023 when she was photographed returning to her apartment in New York City. Mm -hmm. The 60-year-old has lived... Wow, she's 60? That makes me feel old. <laughs> ...a private life for years, but in February, she released a statement thanking fans for their support after revealing... Yeah, she lived a private life but she exploited everybody else around her because she was the one with the most skeletons in the closet. She had been diagnosed with aphasia and frontal temporal dementia. Quote, 
I want to say I have immense gratitude for the love and kind words I have received after sharing my diagnosis of aphasia and frontal temporal dementia. Yeah. Let me say, wow, your response have been overwhelming. The messages shared with me have touched me, reminding me of the power of unity and the need for compassion. That, that's where it's annoying. Like, I'm rooting for her to live as long as possible because we're all going to die someday. But this whole compassion thing, you used to out people for being gay in a time when it wasn't really accepted to be gay. So, oh, I'm looking for compassion because you're dying. And your life's flashing before your eyes and you're realizing a lot of people don't like you. This whole, use compassion. You never were compassionate. She wrote in a statement obtained by Access Hollywood. Wendy's team revealed her diagnosis earlier that month. The news of her diagnosis came on the heels of the shocking new trailer for a documentary that chronicles her ongoing health troubles. She's got a big chest, though. In Lifetimes, where is Wendy Williams? The media. Uh, it's been pretty quiet not having her around the last year and a half. Like, I'm not as raging. Because she's so infuriating. But her not being around, it's like kind of boring. I kind of miss her. Your personality opens up about the personal struggles she's Hi, faced in recent years, from her health to her finances, yeah. and she breaks down over, quote, having no money or friends. Yeah, and she used to rip into celebrities about them going broke, and then karma hit her right across the face, and then she used to talk about everybody else being bad people, and then she's the one with no friends because you spent your whole life talking bad about other people. It's one thing to say an opinion about things, but to exploit and ruin lives and then wonder why no one wants to be around you when you're 60? Sorry. Did you see a neurologist mm -hmm. to find out if I'm crazy? You are crazy. You're a sociopath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You sound like me. You're copying me. I know you listen to my show, Wendy, because you just did the mm-hmm. My uncle the other day, my uncle Phil texted me, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. Pat George, who is a great traffic reporter, one time I was at work and he comes into the room like and just goes, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I know I say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. I have to sit down again. All right, enough for her. Again, I don't root for anybody to have a bad life, but she was so bad to everybody else. Uh, let me see here. This headline fascinates me because I try to listen to the clips and read the articles ahead of time, but I have this saying that I save it for the air. Like whenever I've done an interview, if people try to talk to me beforehand, I go, save it for the air. I learned that from Rover's Morning Glory. Save it for the air. Now, I think Rover wasn't talking to people because he didn't want to talk to people during commercial breaks because he's antisocial, but he would be like, shave it for the air. Shave it for the air. So I save everything for the air, and I don't preview clips beforehand. So I don't know what this is about, but there's this bedtime activity that Mark Consuelos and Kelly Ripa do that's ruining their relationship. I want to hear about the bedtime habit that's ruining our relationship, and it's not sex. What? <sighs> Her arguments. Can you imagine getting into an argument with Kelly Ripa? It'd be wicked. <laughs> Kelly Ripa makes a relatable bedroom confession about hubby Mark Consuelos. During the August 29th episode of Live with Kelly and Mark, mm -hmm. the spouses and co-hosts dive into a hot topic, a study about the bedroom habit that's impacting intimacy for many couples. What, eating a lot of steak and farting? And it turns out the famous duo often has trouble controlling their smartphone addiction, just like the rest of us. I have a rule where once I take my Risperdal and my Ollie sleeping gummies that I try to not look at my phone. Because if I get like a rude comment or even a compliment, it gives me the dopamine and I don't sleep. So if you're on your phone and you're wondering why you can't sleep, that blue light's keeping you up. You want to hear about the bedtime habit that's ruining our relationship? And it's what? Your wicked arguments? not sex. What is it? <laughs> it's called, <laughs> I'm trying to find, Par parallel scrolling. Oh. It's when we are side by side in the bed, <laughs> scrolling <laughs> parallel. Um, yeah, it, it, anyway, they're saying that uh, you're basically de decreasing the chances of intimacy and affection and generally engaging with your partner. Yeah. I like. I will give this to them. The ratings 
are at an all-time high for Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos. So there's a lot of bored people at home. I'm looking at it. They're number one in their time slot. There's a lot of bored people at that time. When we side-by-side -side scroll, because what it proves to me is what you often accuse me of. Farting? Which is when you click on something and the volume's at full blast and you don't turn it down. All right. Enough of them. 856 49 Hoppy. Today we're hitting both Target and Aldi to get some grocery shopping done. The girl's heading to Costco and then right after I have to also go to Walmart. For the everyday consumer, loyalty now lies in the price. Yeah. I don't really like this price. This is much better. It's exactly the same and you get a gallon. And new research proves more people than ever are letting the deal, not the brand, serve as their shopping guide. Even like knockoff cereal from Aldi's doesn't taste that different and you save money constantly changing where they shop based on rewards and their wallets. They're known as the uncommitted consumers. You have to branch out and see what the best deals are at. Try out new stores. Mom of two, Getsy Ornelas, grocery shops once a week. And the trip is never a one-stop shop. Give me a sense of the different stores where you shop and why. All right. You know, it's a slow news day for the news when they're talking about where people shop. 856-49-HOPPY. I have a huge crush on Nikki Glazer, and there's some news about her. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! She seems naughty. First up in Pop Start, Nikki Glazer, the Emmy nominated comedian, kicked off the summer, scoring big laughs at that Tom Brady roast. Tom also lost $30 million in crypto. Tom, how did you fall for that? I mean, even Gronk was like, me know that not real money. Like, <laughs> her hair looks so good that night. Yeah, that roast, I can see why Tom Brady regretted it. He probably thought everybody was going to be nice to him. <laughs> hey, she's, she's so funny. She's so funny. <laughs> she's so funny. Well, now Glazer just landed her next big gig. She will host the uh, Golden Globes. Wow. It'll be her first time stepping onto the international award show stage, sharing her excitement in a statement. It's one of the few times that show business not only allows, but encourages itself to be lovingly mocked. At least I hope so. Yeah, everybody else has done a really bad job since Ricky Gervais of hosting the Golden Globes. So you know that all the uh, actresses and actors, everybody, they're probably on, um, I don't want to say eggshells, but they're probably a little nervous. Mm -hmm. This isn't Jerry Carmichael. Ooh. It's an exciting yet challenging gig because it's live, unpredictable, and in front of Hollywood's biggest stars, who also might be getting wasted while seated next to their recent exes. <laughs> Hell yeah, you got a little Nikki Glaser one-liner in the statement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Golden Globes are scheduled for January 5th. So. All right. 856-49-HOPPY. I see this headline. Lana Del Rey is allegedly dating an alligator tour guide. Hell yeah. Think about the alligator tour guide. Like you just live an average life. You're an alligator tour guide. And then you're banging Lana Del Rey. His name is Jeremy Dufresne. That would be the name of an alligator tour guide. I can't think of anybody else with that name. His name is Jeremy Dufresne. Mm. And he's a swamp boat captain in Louisiana. The two met in 2019. And she went on one of his tours, his alligator tours. Now, fans think that they're dating. He looks like... They probably are hooking up. Spank that from behind. Yeah. Yeah. An alligator tour guide would look. Would very mm. much so. Yeah, it's a Florida man. Probably listens to Bad Morning Radio as well. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com Happy Hour will be right back. All right, we're going to come back and wrap up this show after this, but I feel like playing a banger. If you don't feel like listening, you can skip forward five minutes, but here's one of the greatest songs of all time, and I'm not just saying that. Here is Jay-Z and Mary J. Blige with You're Welcome. Turn, turn me up a little bit. When that music World. comes in, it gets loud. loud, loud. Swissy. Yes. Ah! This is a You Heard That News World premiere. I 
was on Roy I've been hitting so long and I'm a big headed boy Nah, we ain't on HGH Though I might pick up some weight when I'm running through your state Nah, 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 we ain't on the clear We on the runway and back to back legs Dismiss no more drama and Barack Obama Rama's feel honest on these tracks, you act like y'all yeah. wanna save me, but I'm back. You get this. Luckily, my therapy is the rap. I just bear my soul, I don't expect nothing back. You all welcome, long as you felt. I was gon' get my, if you know where the hell I'm from. I'm from the bottom, so I do this from the diapers. Quick, fast, turn the big apple in the cider. I do this, I'm a writer and a writer. I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do this for the lifers. I'm a writer and a writer. I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do it for the life as you know. See again Somebody so deadly via the pen Leave a hoagie to Padino When we be in Big up to Biggie and Pac I do it for them Until I reach Kali I do it for him Do it for those who can't do for self Due to the pen May these bars reach through your bar And mine When Mary sing it heals your heart Cause solely stands feel you are Love is a battlefield We all get scars oh, I put my heart in this is much more than marketed music The reason I got a market to do this Is people going through pain, I'm just walking Damn, Loki, where the hell you find this one? This ain't no marketed music People going through pain, I'm just talking them to it Whoa. This following segment has been brought to you by Mitra-9.com, the best kava and kratom around. If you go to Mitra-9.com and at checkout use keyword hoppy, you can save 20%. All right, we're gonna come back and we're gonna wrap up this show. Happy hour. Happy hour. If a Chicago accent and Florida man went on a wild weekend and ended up with a kid, it would be Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. And now for something completely different. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show. 
show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Now, if you don't want to listen to this, like I say, you can skim forward two minutes, but this song that I made on Suno.com is so good. This is Seems a Happy Hour. Time to laugh with Ryan's power. Wacky fun and silly jokes. Happy Hour loves his folks. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. With Ryan Happy. Yeah, he's the topper. Grab your drinks and join the crew. Crazy stories just for you. Ryan's here to make you grin. Let the happy fun begin. Happy Hour. Happy Hour. With Ryan Happy. Last and never sloppy. Got your popcorn, got your drink Turn it up and don't you blink Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! So we're going to talk about two side chicks Kamala Harris, whatever her dumb name is And Angelina Jolie Angelina Jolie is getting candid about her personal relationships Yeah, when you are a career side chick, you're not going to have a lot of them. The actress, who is currently promoting her new film, Maria, said... You know how irrelevant she is? I haven't heard one person go, Oh my God, I can't wait to see Maria. It's down with The Hollywood Reporter for a new cover story. In it, the Oscar winner reveals her inner circle is very small, admitting she doesn't have many close friends. The star says... Yeah, you don't look at Angelina Jolie and go, oh my God, I want to be friends with her. I don't really have those kinds of relationships. Maybe it's losing your parent young. Maybe it's working. Maybe it's a part of being a person that sleeps with married men, so a lot of women don't want to trust me. Maybe it's being somebody who's been betrayed a lot. Yeah, what about the relationship of Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston? I bet she felt betrayed when he was having intercourse with you. You're not innocent. Shut up. And he probably turned all all the kids against Brad Pitt, even though he's probably not a great guy, but I'm sure you're not innocent. You're a side chick. You have no credibility. I don't have a lot of those warm, close relationships as yeah, because you're a sociopath. Much that I lean on. Angelina's comments about being betrayed come in the same interview that she refuses to talk about another hot topic, her ex, Brad Pitt. Yeah, whenever an ex refuses to talk about their ex, that's because they know their skeleton in their closet that they're afraid won't get out. Like, I've had ex-girlfriends talk about me, and I wish them the best. You kill them with kindness, gentlemen. If you have a girlfriend that speaks out about you, gentlemen, that's because you left an impact. And you know what you do? You never talk to the person ever again. And that's what I like about Brad Pitt. You got Angelina Jolie and you got John Voight pretending he cares about her running their mouth about Brad Pitt. I've been through it, gentlemen. And you know what you do? You never respond. When reporter Rebecca Keegan asks, may I ask what the status of your divorce is? Jolie responds simply, no. So then don't talk about alienating people and feeling neglected and alone when you won't talk about the elephant in the room. There's nothing else to talk about. Nobody's going to see Maria. That's the one topic everyone's talking about is your divorce when you were originally a side chick. You're a Gen X Haley Bieber. And she and Jennifer Aniston was Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber was Brad Pitt. You know what I'm saying? He was originally with somebody and then cheated on her with the person and then ended up being with the side chick, which makes you wonder if Justin and Haley are going to break up. Here's what I'm saying. Angelina Jolie is like, I want to be authentic and have friends. But then when there's a really tough subject to talk about, she's like, no, I'm above that. Shut up. You can't have it both ways. The two who share six kids together. Ugh. Those poor kids probably have so many issues. I don't care how much money and clout you have. I know they weren't their birth kids or adopted. I bet the kids are like, I'd rather be adopted by a family in Grand Rapids, Michigan and have a normal middle class life than being attached to these losers. Split in 2016, but have been embroiled in a messy divorce battle for years. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine being Brad Pitt? He seems like he drinks a whole bottle of Jack. And at the night, he ain't coming back because he's cheating on people. 
In the interview, it's noted that Angelina draws firm boundaries on some topics. Ex- yeah, so then don't expect people to care about what you're doing or to talk to anybody if you're not going to talk about anything. You don't want to talk about anything that really made you famous, but then you're like, why don't people talk to me? Because there's nothing to talk to you about. What, the weather? Blaining that things have changed in Hollywood, that before, quote, you could have this messy private process and the work spoke, adding now the audience's relationship is different. Yeah. So pretty much back in the day, you could be a side chick, but now because of TMZ and social media, you can't sleep with married women without consequences. I'm trying to get used to what to share. Yeah. Hopefully you don't share any STDs. The 49-year-old is currently attending the Venice Film Festival where she's stirring up Oscar buzz for her performance as opera singer Maria Callas in her new film, Maria. She opened up during a press conference on August 29th about turning pain into art. And- I don't get why people find her attractive. She seems so fake. She's got that Kelly Ripa energy where it's never her fault. Also, Taylor Swift energy. And the emotional art form of opera. All right, I don't care anymore. No one's seeing the movie, so we won't talk about it. And then you got this side chick. There's a political divide that it has nothing to do with policy. It's yeah. over an opinion piece in the Washington Post labeling second gentleman Doug Emhoff as a modern day sex symbol. If you think Kamala Harris's husband who cheated on his wife is a sex symbol, then you're a loser liberal. You're a cuck. You're whipped. You can vote for whoever you want, but if you think that guy with a beer gut is a sex symbol, we should never have sex again as a human being and watch the whole world get extinct while Elon Musk and Nick Cannon have kids. If you think her husband is a sex symbol, this is liberal media propaganda. Zamor Cogliano reports conservatives tend to disagree. Kamala Harris's husband, a sex symbol? He's the most hideous looking person ever. Her and her dumb cackling laugh. A Washington Post columnist is stirring things up, calling Doug Emhoff a dreamboat. What a hunk. He's hideous looking. He looks like any sociopathic boomer CEO. Who's ever looked at her husband? This is the liberal media trying to get her elected. It's okay if you want her to get elected, but don't lie by saying her five out of 10 looking husband is a sex symbol. Let's move over, Ryan Gosling. But Megyn Kelly isn't buying it. Yeah, I don't even like Megyn Kelly and I'll side with her here. Doug Emhoff, modern day sex symbol. Megyn Kelly, now, you know she's annoying and probably uses teeth, but she's not bad looking. She writes this drivel. The Washington mm. Post op-ed column was written by CNN contributor Catherine Rampell. Oh, so it's just some average looking millennial that wants to write a clickbait piece. Got it. Because this girl's cute. She's probably 32 and super liberal and wants to do whatever she can to get I'm with her in office. Why not the fact that uh, Kamala's a sex symbol? She's literally a career side chick that got famous from, you know, doing favors. If it wasn't for politics, she'd be working at any of the brothels in Tampa Bay. Who says Emhoff is secure enough with his own masculinity to sometimes prioritize his wife's ambitions over his own. What about his first wife that he cheated on? What about her ambitions? This is nonsense. And I'm going to read you some of what she writes. Kamala Harris's husband being a sex symbol is as legitimate as Donald Trump being a Christian, Donald Trump not hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein, and Donald Trump being a good husband. It's all propaganda. I bet he's cheated on Kamala Harris. I bet they're swingers. Oh, sex symbol. Get the hell out of here. Temporarily setting aside his own professional ego makes him... Uh, I didn't mean to click on the fast-talking thing on this uh, video, but Megyn Kelly's never sounded better because she's getting to the point. No less of a man. All right, it's enough of this propaganda. So stupid sex symbol. Now, Leah Remini's kind of a sex symbol. Leah Remini and husband Angelo Pagan break up after 21 years of marriage. I wonder what it's like being with someone for 21 years and then you break up. My record's been two years. Mm hmm. The King of Queens alum is parting ways with. I love King of Queens. With her husband Angelo after almost three decades together. Leah and Angelo say in a joint statement shared on X and Instagram on August 29th, quote, After 28 years together and 21 years of marriage, we have decided to file for divorce. That's sad. 
This decision came after a lot of thought and care. And as hard as divorce is, we yeah. are approaching this with a positive outlook because we know it's what's best for us. All right. Well, then we'll move on. I'm trying to keep it. I gotta skip on what it's gonna come here, right? I used to sing with my mom when I was like really little. We've been through a lot. Mariah Carey's got that sociopathic mumbling voice. Mariah wrote, My heart is broken, but added she felt blessed to be able to spend the last week with her 87-year-old mom before she passed. The singer was estranged from her sister Allison, who coincidentally also died over the weekend. On the same day, it was weird. Hi, I'm Allison Carey. Yeah. Officials tell ET the 63-year-old who battled substance abuse and was diagnosed with HIV in 1990. That's sad died of natural causes in eastern New York State. That's a pretty good life. I'm not saying it's a good life, but to live 34 more years after getting HIV, I mean, that's good. Last year, she posted about needing money to replace her teeth. It's almost impossible to get things done without teeth. Yeah, makes sense. Allison unsuccessfully tried to sue Mariah for $1.25 million over a claim in Mariah's memoir. That yeah, you know that she's probably jealous that Mariah has had what seemed like a good life mm -hmm, compared to yours. And when the singer was 12, Allison tried to drug her and sell her out to a pimp. I mean, if you're hanging out and doing drugs and not having teeth and having HIV, it's probably true. And you refer to your sister as your ex-sister. Oh, look at Oprah, someone who hung out with Harvey Weinstein at the very least and allegedly Jeffrey Epstein. She's talking to Mariah Carey in an interview about being pimped out to a pimp. And you refer to your sister as your ex-sister. I never felt safe. As yeah. for her mom, well, Mariah called their connection, quote, a prickly rope of pride, pain, shame, gratitude, jealousy, admiration, and disappointment. Oh, Mariah Carey, it's never your fault. I knew for a long time that to my family, I'd been an ATM machine with a wig on. Yeah, I mean, that is the thing. When you're rich and famous and you got a sister that's got HIV and it seems like she was a prostitute, you're probably giving out money. I gave them so much money, especially my mother. My mom's... All right. That sucks. LeBron James won't allow Bronny to call him dad on the court. But you know, his side chicks, alleged side chicks that he's been linked with, probably call him daddy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. X, formerly known as Twitter, goes down as users across the world in U.S. report outage. Elon Musk is like, damn it, I can't do anything right. No, but I'm going to portray myself on social media like I'm perfect to all my incel fans. He's a tool. Patrick Mahomes Sr., pleads guilty to felony DU, DWI case. Uh, it says here, do, 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 do. this was his third DUI. He's facing up to 10 years behind bars as well as a fine of 10,000. But he's not going to get that. If any other rich person, mm -hmm, I mean, any other person got a DUI? They would be sent to prison immediately. But, oh, it's Patrick Mahomes' father? Whatever. <sighs> I don't know. What are we going to do here? I've been doing this show for 90 minutes, and it's happy hour and a half. You should be so proud of me for doing this. Mm -hmm. We are live from the Topher Morrison Personify Studios in St. Petersburg, Florida. And we're also out of here. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Tick tock, clocks a joke, we're playing cruel pranks. Hoppy's hour almost done, feels like robbery in banks. Ryan Hoppy on the mic, dropping wisdom in streams. Syndicated sorrow, now it's time to shatter dreams. Oh, the hoppy hour is coming to a close. Radio waves fading like a wilting rose. Laughter and joy dissolving in the air, but we'll keep the rhythm. Oh, life's just so unfair. But the laughter's growing dim Eardrums missing Hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM Shout outs hit the street But soon the sound will vanish Like shadows in the heat Oh the hoppy hour Is coming to a close Radio waves Fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy Dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm Oh life's just so unfair Phone lines buzzing But the laughter's growing dim Drums missing.
miss and hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM, shout outs hit the street But soon the sound will vanish like shadows in the heat Oh the hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh life's just so unfair Like clockwork to a show And now it's time to face the silence Like a TV on snow Riot Hoppy held the mic With humor so divine The void left in our hearts Wider than a canyon line Line Empty speaker silent vibe But coming to an end Like a roller coaster Stopping round the river's bend Hoppy's jokes and jabs These are daily grind Now silence louder than the thoughts We can't rewind Oh, the hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilton rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair The hoppy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilton rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Happy hour, happy hour Happy hour is now over. <laughs> Happy hour is now over. <laughs>